You're listening to Feathers, a podcast of stories about God speaking and His people having just enough faith to believe Him and obey. I hope these stories inspire you and encourage you to take flight in your own faith. I'm your host, Amy Bennett, and this is Season 5, Episode 10. Hey friends, and welcome to Feathers This Week. I am so excited about this week because I have invited one of my best friends on to the show today. Yes, one of my in real life friends. Her name is Danny Thomas. If you've listened to all the episodes, then you will recognize her from my trip this past summer to Nashville to be a part of the Looking for Lovely weekend with Annie Downs. And Danny went with me that weekend and we had an absolute blast. And we have been having an absolute blast for the past 20 years or so. In today's episode, we're going to talk about how she and her family moved about an hour south over three years ago and y'all I'm still not over it Um, and after they moved um, they ended up in really um, kind of missions work that they really weren't expecting and and not in a way they were expecting and I love to see people following where God leads them um, but I can definitely tell you based on their story alone that it's not always easy for the person going or for the people that they leave behind I miss having her close by so much In her intro, Danny tries to say she's just a normal person, but I can tell you that a, quote, normal person can be a woman of great faith. She has a huge heart for God and is being obedient to doing whatever God leads her, and I am so proud to call her my friend. So let's go ahead and get to our conversation. Here is Danny Thomas. Well, hey, Danny, and welcome to Feathers today. Hey, how are you? I am so good. I am so, so happy to have you on the show. It's been a long time coming. Yeah, I'm excited too. Um, So how about you start off and introduce yourself and your family and what you do? Okay, so I'm Danny. I am, gosh, I'm so normal. It's weird. (laughs) I feel (laughs) like I don't have anything super special about me except my God. Um, I am... Married to my high school sweetheart, Dave, who is a high school football and track and field coach. And we have four children, um, ranging from high school all the way down to first grade this year. So that's a new adventure. Um, And I'm a health and wellness coach. And so that's kind of a lot of the different hats I wear (laughs) in a nutshell. Um, and you have a job too, right? <laughs> I do. <laughs> I do. I also um, manage a financial management consulting firm as well, all from home. So yeah, a lot of days I wear many, many hats in one day. <laughs> yes. And just so you know, guys, Danny has been, one. she's like one of my oldest friends and she's awesome. She's being very humble right now. <laughs> <laughs> she does a lot of amazing things. Oh, thank you. Um, Okay, so why don't I'll just let you why don't you share like how you and I got to know each other? Oh my goodness, how you and I got to know each other? Wow, yeah. we could we should be sharing this in like a video montage. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I knew Amy uh, way back in high school when she began dating um, one of my husband's good friends, Scott. And so, yeah, we go way back um, to when we had um, big hair with puffy bangs. Um. <laughs> <laughs> my kids laugh. They were just looking at pictures from high school because my 20 year reunion was this year. Yeah. <laughs> um, so Lexi's like, what are those things? <laughs> like she's pointing at my bangs. Oh goodness. Yes. We had them going on. <laughs> yeah. So we knew each other in high school. I think we actually had a class I think we had one class together, maybe. I kind of knew who you were, okay. and every, we all, you guys went to church together. So Danny, David, and my husband Scott all went to church together, and I kind of hung around church because Scott and I were dating. And then I think, though, we got a lot closer when we both got engaged, like within the same six months Definitely. or so, I guess. Definitely, yeah. Yes. Um, I feel, I, it's cool because I feel like we've kind of grown up in our faith now together over all of these years. Um, And so that's been, I don't know, a fun part of our friendship for me. (laughs) Yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. I feel like I've grown up all together. I mean, because we've had, we got married within the same like six months. Then we had our first child. Well, you had children. (laughs) (laughs) Danny's eldest are twins. Um, Our first round of kids together, our second round of kids together. Um, We kind of got off track after that, but. 
<laughs> anyway, so Danny's been kind of my BFF, and she's a little bit ahead of me, like six months. So I always kind of know, like six months in advance, what's going to happen. <laughs> oh gosh, <laughs> oh, that's so funny. So yeah, she's <laughs> yeah, she's the one that I would you know go grab coffee with once a month or maybe even more to keep my sanity yeah. through everything. And so you guys moved. How many years has it been since you moved away? We moved in um, 2013. So it's been about three and a half years now. It was right before my twins entered sixth grade and they are freshmen this year. Oh my goodness. So three very long years for me. Yes. (laughs) For me as well. A lot of life has changed. (laughs) I know. It's like we we have kids in middle school and you have kids in high school and we adopted during that time and... I mean, I feel like, I don't know, you know, I've grown a lot purchased personally and in my faith the last three years, too. So I've hated not to be able to do that as often as we could have. But it's all good. I mean, I think we've both kind of grown in good direction. So that's what I wanted to share. I mean, I think you hit it right on the head that we've grown, you know, over the last 20 years or so a lot in our faith. And I just have seen. Um, you step out in faith a lot of times, you know, whether it was a mission trip or, you know, a job change or moving your family. And I can remember some of those coffee dates, you know, and you saying, I just feel God is doing something like, I I don't know what it is, but God's getting ready to do something big. And I just want to be ready. And I want to, I want to see what it was. And that was probably, Gosh, that was for a long time, but I know at least probably four or five years ago, right before you guys moved. So I'd, I'd love to go back there, kind of to that point. We could talk a lot okay. about other things and sort of talk about, you know, what does that feel like to know that God is doing something? And then how did it kind of turn out? And yeah. Okay. Yeah. So like I was saying, my life is so very normal. It's almost weird. Um you know, David and I both grew up in the same hometown, um, had lived there um, forever, got married there. Our families were there. Um, but about six years ago, I guess about the same time that my youngest child, Charlie, was born, around that same time, I began to feel this tugging in my heart that God was preparing us for something. Um, and I know we talked about it one day, um, over coffee that I just knew God was preparing us for something and I didn't know what, but I knew that I needed to be prepared to do whatever he said. And so I began praying in that way, Lord, just, um, you know, here am I, send me, do whatever you want. And I prayed that prayer for about a year and, Then my husband, um, Dave, began feeling that same thing, and um, we just both had this weird, like, we don't know what is coming next, but we just know that God is preparing us for something, and so together, we just began praying, you know, here we are, Lord, send us, do whatever, and um, I'll be honest, um, I really thought that God was preparing us to enter the mission field. Um, yeah, you we, thought like Jamaica, you thought you were going to Jamaica. Yeah, at one I mean, point, right? really, yeah. I mean, I had been on some short term mission trips and I just really felt like God was calling us to enter the mission field. And we began praying that way. We even went so far as to go online and begin filling out all of the stuff to apply to be Southern Baptist missionaries. And, um, I guess it was around 2012, 2013, kind of the beginning of that year. We both knew without a doubt that God was moving us to a new place. And um, again, we didn't know where, but we had said, wherever you send us, Lord, we'll go. And um, so we knew we were going somewhere. We just didn't know where. And, um, you know, I had prepared in my mind all of these, you know, awesome, glamorous places that God may take us, and um, funny how God is, but as it turned out, we did move. (laughs) We moved the summer of 2013, um, but it was a whole lot less glamorous than um, I had made it all out to be in my mind. Um, I mentioned earlier that my husband is a high school football and track coach, and in 2013, he um, he took a new job 
in a very rural community, um, only about an hour from where we had grown up. And I remember coming down for that interview and crying while he was in the interview because I thought, really, God, I have prayed all of these years and <laughs> and this is where you're sending us? Really, you guys, God? okay, I have to interrupt just a second to say you guys have to know Danny a little bit. <laughs> Danny is, oh gosh, how can I describe you, Danny? You're a, oh, The goodness. word that comes to mind is a fashionista. I mean, <laughs> D- Danny loves the Lord. Um, but she also loves clothes and she loves shoes and you will not ever see Danny without a pair of heels on unless she's like in spin class. Um, and most likely they are taking her to the mall (laughs) and she's my, I learned any, if I have any sort of style in my life, it's probably because I learned it from Danny. Um, I just remember all the rules that Danny tells me to do. And I just, I just try to dress like her is really all I'm trying to do. Um, you're like my Barbie. No. (laughs) Yeah, so Danny is very much, and I think, I mean, you've lived in the suburbs, but you love the city. And, I do. Um, m- much more of a city girl. Just there's no, like, I'm going to be casual today, Danny. There's there's none of that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you, you really like having, you know, the South Park, if you're in the Charlotte area, you know the South Park Mall. Yes. Um, you're basically like an Ann Taylor, you know, law yeah. model. Yeah. Um, so you take her into South Carolina Royal, I can't even say that word, rural <laughs> area, and she's going to cry. And so that doesn't surprise me at all. So, yeah. It was. I mean, we I didn't even have, like, a Walgreens. Oh, <laughs> and gosh. so it was really... The Dollar was General. Funny. <laughs> I know. It was funny because, I mean... I had prepared myself to go, you know, somewhere very far. And yet here we were somewhere not very far at all. And yet it felt completely foreign to me. Um, So very different from anything that, uh, you know, I had grown up with, Um, uh, you know, beautiful people and yet so different from myself. Um, And so, yeah, it was, it was really not, not what I had made it out to be in my mind. Um, And, and it was hard. Um, it was, it, it was a hard couple years, um, as we grew, as we grew there. But you um, knew, I mean, did you, did you know at that point, like this was what God was preparing I us knew, for? I knew the moment we went down for that interview, I, I sat in the car, I, I actually, I dropped Dave off at the interview and I drove around and cried because I knew Without a doubt, even on that first interview, that that was where God was putting us. And I was like, but God, that's not what I. Oh, yeah, no. I knew. I mean, and he left he left the interview and he got in the car and we both just knew that this is where God was sending us. And you know, it didn't make a whole lot of sense to us at the moment. But at the same time, we knew we were completely confident that it was got at work. And so we said yes and, and did it. Um, coincidentally, I guess you could say, although I don't, I don't think anything is <laughs> coincidence. Um, but in those years leading up to that, um, as I had been praying that, you know, we would go wherever God went, um, I began to feel really convicted um, about my health and wellness. Um, I don't know, after having four kids, um, I had, and I'm a small person, um, I had kind of neglected my health in a way, and I was really exhausted and um, just craving sugar and caffeine and carbs, and um, it was it was an unhealthy physical um, cycle for me. And so as we began praying about where we were going to go, I was really convicted that I needed to be fit and healthy enough to do whatever God asked of us. And so I began paying attention to my physical health, um, and just began praying for him to help me, um, for him to, you know, fill me with more of him and less, um, of the cravings and, you know, to fill me with a desire to exercise. And, um, you know, it's funny when we begin praying for, um, for us to be fit enough to do the things God asks of us. Um, 
you know, he's faithful in that because he, he has all these plans for us. And so, um, you know, at, at the same time, um, God brought, um, a health and wellness company into our life and I had great results. Um, and so when we moved, um, it felt like this crazy, I don't know, <laughs> this crazy combination of events, but we moved to this place where we knew no one, where the people were so different from me. Um, and at the same time, God had kind of thrown this health and wellness company into our life. And Dave had said, Hey, Danny, I think, you know, this would be a great thing for you to focus on. It would be a business that you could do kind of on the side and we could maybe save some extra for our, our kids, um, you know, college funds and, you know, have some money to, to give. And, um, you know, we had, we sponsored a lot of different things, you know, kids going on mission trips and all those kinds of things. And so we kind of, at the same time, um, took on this, um, this business, which was <laughs> in my mind at the time, look, it, I was like, this is nuts. I don't even know anybody. How am I going to build a business, um, without even, you know, knowing anyone. Um, and so that was, um, part of this whole crazy journey the past couple of years. Um, but, like I said, we, we moved to this place, we knew no one, and I hear I had this business. And um, because I had this brand new business um, and knew no one, I really had to force myself to get out there in the community and build relationships Um which I will say was hard um, at first. I felt like everybody, you mentioned my shoes, but when I got there, it was like months before I saw somebody wearing a pair of platforms. And <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I felt like, I mean, I stuck out like a sore thumb. It, like I would drop Charlie off at preschool and I just, uh, yeah, I stuck out like a sore thumb. Um, and so, but anyway, it, I really had to force myself to get out and meet people and build real relationships with them um, before I could even begin to grow our business. And so, um, and so that's what I did when we got there. I um, I took time to meet people and build relationships with them. And then um, over over that first year that we were there, our business really did grow. Um, I began to coach a lot of people through their own weight loss and health and wellness goals. Um, just using a lot of the things that I had learned through my own journey um, to health and wellness. Um, and I realized that as I began to coach people, that really the first thing I had to do with them was build trust with them. Um, anytime you're working with somebody um, to reach a health goal, you know, it's a, it's a real trust relationship. And so I had to build trust with my customers. I had to really get to know them. I, um, I found that almost everyone that I was working with had things deep down inside that we had to kind of uncover and work through in order for them to be successful. Um, and I realized uh, through my own journey and then through helping so many others that our spiritual health and our physical health is really closely connected. And I realized that just, you know, coaching people through weight loss was, uh, it was so much more than that. It was so much more than meal planning and exercise. Um, I kind of had to become counselor and, mm -hmm. I realized that I was praying for the people who were our customers. I was praying for their families as they went through this. And um, about uh, six or seven months into this, quote, business, I realized that I had had more opportunity to share my faith and to pray with people and to talk with people about Christ than I had ever had in my entire life. And, um, it was mind blowing, um, just in such a short amount of time, how many more, um, conversations about Christ I had had in that short amount of time than I had had in years. Um, and 
one day it just, it just like, it was like the scales were removed from my eyes. And I realized that this, I'm going to cry. I realized that this was my mission field. Mm -hmm. Um, And so instead of looking at this place as, you know, this place that was so different from us and the, the job that Dave had was very difficult, um, and it was it was a really hard time for us um, as a family in that place. Um, but instead of looking at it that way, I began to look at the people that I came in contact with as my mission field and this health and wellness business as my ministry. And um, gosh, that changed it changed everything for me. Um, now. You know, over three years later, God has blessed it crazy abundantly, um, and we've had just the joy of seeing so many people's lives changed, and not just phys- physically, but eternally, and seeing families changed, um, and then as we, you know, we've grown a team, those people have become our family, and um, we have been able to see their families' lives changed as we pray with them and walk through life with them. And so it's just been this, uh, it's been a beautiful, just a beautiful, beautiful journey the past um, couple of years. Um, And I don't know, it all started with us just saying, yes, Lord, to whatever, (laughs) whatever you want. Yes. And just to kind of tie up, though, you guys ended up moving from that city, right? We did this past year. Um, like I said, that job was very difficult, um, but God, God really did um, bring along some wonderful people along beside us um, in that journey. But my husband did take another new job this past year um, in Columbia, and so we have we have moved just a little bit, um, I guess east of where we (laughs) were um, to Columbia, which is a little more like home to me, (laughs) I guess you could say. Um, um, But we are um, still continuing to work with people through their health and wellness and, um, you know, continuing that journey right where we are now. Yeah, and I love, too, um, that it, it feels like where you guys have landed has been a really good spot for your whole family. It has. It has. Um, It's been, you know, my two girls going into high school this year, it's been uh, just a wonderful fit for them. It's been really neat just to see them in this first half of the year just kind of blossom into, you know, the young ladies that God is um, making them to be. Um, They've both gotten involved in different things in the school, um, and it's it's been really cool to watch that um, for them this year. Yeah. Well, um, I just want to circle back to some of the things that you talked about. And I love that. And this is just one of those, to me, quintessential stories. And, I, and I've seen it so much is where you think God is going to do one thing and he yeah. just he does it, but he does it in a totally different way yeah. <laughs> than you were expecting. Exactly. Um, but I want to circle back to that. You talked a, a little bit about it. And, and I love your passion around health and wellness. And I love your viewpoint about health and wellness. Um, Talk about that spiritual and physical health being connected and why um, why is your health and wellness a spiritual issue? Why is it so important that we have good health and wellness? I mean, obviously, we want to like live a long time. But (laughs) other than that, yeah, it's really not something I thought of that much until I don't know, maybe five years ago. Um, But I noticed just in my own, and I, I will tell you right now, I have no like degree in like any kind of health science or anything like that. Um, this is really just my own, um, you know, my own journey and watching other people go through their own journeys and just um, a lot of prayer, <laughs> I will tell you. Um, but I've noticed in my own journey and just through coaching so many others that our physical health is so often affected by and a reflection of our spiritual health. Um, And I want to say real quickly that I'm not talking about 
you know, non-preventable diseases like cancer and, you know, other kinds of diseases. Right, um, right, that's, right. that's not what I'm talking about here. Um, but a lot of our physical health is a result, or maybe I should say our lack of physical health, um, even as Christians, is a result of attempting to fill ourselves with something other than Christ. Um, you know, for some, um, as it was in my case, as a, you know, a tired mom who had sort of lost her identity along the way, um, you know, I was filling myself with sugar, caffeine, carbs, um, you know, in some sort of attempt to find that energy that I really needed from Christ, um, you know, for others, it may be focusing on stress and anxiety, um, whether in their personal life or their work life, um, rather than allowing the power of Christ to kind of take over um, for them and provide peace. Um, you know, for others, it may be alcohol and the list goes on and on and on. But um, as I've helped a lot of people, I've learned that in almost all cases, a lack of health can be traced back to something in our life that we've not completely dealt with. Um, you know, for a lot of people, it may be a divorce. It may be the loss of a spouse or a child or a parent. Um, it may be a loss of identity. You know, I mean, I was a, before I had kids, I was a teacher um, and found a lot of meaning in that. And then as I had kids, um, you know, I was a stay-at-home mom and I, I had really kind of lost a lot of myself in that. Um, for some people, it may be a very stressful or demanding job, um, and they're not finding a lot of balance. It may be a stressful time with a child or another family member or even just a lifetime of telling yourself you're not good enough um, or trying to be perfect. Um, just the list goes on and on and on, but in almost all cases, I've found that for someone to be successful with their health for the long term, we really have to get down to what the real issues are and deal with them and change our pattern of thinking. Um, and that often means a shift in focus. Um, if we can shift our focus to Christ and allow him to fill us with all of him, what he says about us, um, you know, being fit enough to do the things that he wants us to do, it can change our thoughts and then it can also change our behaviors. Um, and that's, it, it's really a circle um, that, you know, when we are, I know for myself at least, when I am completely focused on Christ, so many of the cravings that I have, the stress, the anxiety, all of that can be diminished when I'm focused on Christ. And, um, and so my physical health for, for me is a, a lot of times a reflection of how focused I am on Christ at that moment. When I start to take my eyes off of him, Oh my goodness. Um, Amy, you know me from way back. Self-control is not my thing. I mean, yeah. <laughs> it, is, it is, I mean, if you need a friend who is spontaneous, I am your girl. Um, so self-control has never been, um, my strong suit. Um, but when I am focused on Christ and asking him, um, for that self-control, um, you know, my health, my health is directly affected. Um, and I found that for most people, um, it is the same relationship. Um, so it's different in people. I mean, it doesn't manifest itself the same way, but um, it's often related. Well, I love that you bring up that control because I've, I mean, I don't know much about health and wellness, to be honest, but what I know of myself and what I've been reading and, you know, it seems to me that it becomes so the food is just an escape or a way to control your life when other things, other parts of your right. life are not in control. So you feel stress, anxiety, your day is terrible and you go try to eat yeah. a bunch of ice cream at the end of the day. So yes. you, you feel so satisfied. Ben and Jerry. <laughs> ben and Jerry's. Yes. 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 Ben and Jerry was my source of um, comfort for many years. <laughs> right. Um, so when things feel 
out of control. Food can be very much of a control or an escape or um, it answers something within us. Whereas what I'm hearing is instead of going to that, you go to Christ and you take all your stress, anxiety, grief, Mm -hmm. loss to him. And then explain to me, what does food become after that? It's just a, I mean, it just fuels you, right? It's just <laughs> right for me. A food has become fuel, um, fuel to do the things that he asks of me every day. Um, now, it doesn't mean you don't enjoy food. I mean, I love food. I love to cook. Um, I I love the way food tastes. Um, but food has taken on just a new role for me in my life, in that it's sore. It's reason is to fuel me. And so when I wake up in the morning and I'm thinking about breakfast, it's not just, oh, what would taste good, but, you know, what's going to help me get through my day to do, you know, all of these things that God has put on my plate that day. Um, And so I want to choose something that's going to give me that energy and keep me full and keep me moving and keep me thinking clearly, you know, through the day. Um, And so just thinking about food in a different way. Um, you know, at the same time, you don't want to become so regimented about food that it becomes the control, um, because that's also a, um, you know, yeah, it can swing the other way, right? (laughs) It can swing the other way. And I, I I want to make sure people know that's not what we're talking about. Um, because, you know, it, it can definitely become a source of control as well. But, um, just thinking about food as fuel. Really. And that's where I think you have to have, I think in America, we, we need some more education about that because I don't know what my body needs. Well, I, I mean, yeah. I don't know like, you know, carb slash protein slash what vitamins I need. And I don't know that the government is real great about providing that education. <laughs> no. no. And, and, you know, when we were kids, I mean, they told us basically we needed to eat lots of bread and cereal. So right. <laughs> that's what I did for many years. <laughs> um, but no, yeah, we do need a lot more education. And I will say it's different for different people. Um, so you really do have to listen to your body and know how your body feels, um, you know, with different meals and with different food for myself, um, you know, we've talked about before for myself, I need a lot of protein at breakfast. Protein is what's going to keep me full and keep me going all day. Whereas you and I have talked about the fact that you do well with a good complex carb for breakfast, um, you know, oats or something like that works for you for breakfast. And so, you know, it's different for different people, but, um, you know, a donut or a McDonald's biscuit is probably not going to be the best choice for most any people. <laughs> so we're not going to talk about the Chick-fil-A egg and cheese biscuit I had this morning. <laughs> no, no. Yeah. <laughs> not is, about that. I, and I'm, I love to talk to you because this is an area that I feel like I am struggling in and have been for probably, well, for a long time, but especially the last several years since we adopted and it has been a high stress. Yeah. Um, time in my life and so this has been a really big struggle and I think it's that whole thing of I'm so stressed and tired I don't want to exercise and when you don't exercise you get more tired and when you're tired you don't you just don't want to put the energy into even thinking about what kind of proteins or carbs you need right and then you eat poorly and then you're more tired and it's like a really (laughs) cycle (laughs) bad cycle and it's like when you're in a good cycle you can kind of keep that up but getting from Stepping outside of that cycle is really hard. So, it is. And it probably is like a spiritual, emotional issue. So, my question is for those people that have not recognized that it is maybe a spiritual, emotional, some sort of issue, like, how do you begin to process or figure out what that is? What's the underlying okay. cause? Yeah. Well, and I will tell you, it can seem at the beginning very overwhelming. I remember, you know, being overwhelmed myself because it feels like, Oh, this giant mountain um, that you've got to climb or this this huge thing that you've got to conquer. And so it can feel really overwhelming at first. Um, and so the first thing I would suggest is to simply pray. Um, you know, we know that God cares deeply about our health. Um, you know, it's his desire that we are fit and healthy enough to do 
the things that he has for us. And he knows what is ahead. And so he wants us to be prepared for that. And so, you know, he cares deeply about that. So know that you can go to him and pray about it. Um, you know, he also commands us to love him with all of our heart, mind, and strength. And, you know, our strength is our physical health. And so if we pray in that way, if we pray, Lord, make me fit enough to do the things that you want from me. And Lord, show me where in my life am I trying to fill myself with something other than you? Show me, Lord. Um, and he will. Um, you know, he will show you those areas and usually one at a time, you know, he'll show you one thing um, that you can address. And so I think one of the things I tell my clients is, especially if they have a long journey ahead of them, um, you know, we just have to take it one step at a time. You can't change everything all at once, um, but you can change one thing at a time. So pray and ask him to show you um you know, what that area is and focus in that area. Um, you know, for me at the beginning, it was simply um, at the end of the day when I was exhausted, all I wanted was to sit down with a bowl of Ben and Jerry's chocolate fudge brownie ice cream and take the stress away. <laughs> and so instead of that, um, I began sitting down at the end of the day and reading praying and allowing him to fill me at the end of the day with his word. And so that was my first change. Um, and so, you know, start there. Um, the next thing I would suggest is finding someone who can walk the journey with you. Um, just like anything else in our spiritual lives, you know, God designed us to, to be with other people. Um, and on our own, um, it's really hard. Um, so find somebody who can walk with you, somebody who's maybe gone a little bit ahead of you um, and can help you, somebody who can coach you, someone who can encourage you, um, somebody who can pick you up when you fall down because you will. Um, I mean, I will tell you, it is it is a daily, sometimes hourly, you know, even for me, who coaches a lot of other people, it is a daily, hourly prayer that I would be filled with him and not crave other things. Um, and so find that person who can walk with you through it. Um, and then remember, it's it's so not about perfection. You know, he, he never calls us to be perfect. Um, he is simply um, calling us to allow him to be glorified in our weakness. And so, um, you know, it's not about perfection. It's not about a number on the scale. Um, it's really about desiring to know him more and to make him known. And, um, again, being, being well enough to do whatever it is he asks of you, whether it's chaperoning a bunch of youth um, at youth camp and being able to keep up with them or going on a foreign mission trip or working in a very stressful environment and being happy and being the light to people around you or whether it's, you know, staying home with toddlers and um, being able to do that with grace and joy, um, you know, whatever it is God has called you to be, um, be healthy enough to do it. Um, and so I don't know, does that answer? Does that answer your question? Yes, yes. Um, so I love that. So we're talking about like just next steps. So praying that, I, I mean, I see it as praying as, you know, God would shine a light on that, on that thing. Right. That is not being filled with him. Um, and then finding somebody to do it with and yeah. taking it day by day. And I love that you talk about not perfection. That's where I get so tripped up is <sighs> yeah. because I'm a per I'm perfectionist. Every I don't know if everybody knows that, but I'm a perfectionist. <laughs> and so if I'm trying to eat well and I have I go to a party and I eat one one slice of cake, then I'm done. I'm like, well, you know, I'm off my diet. I'm I'm not eating well. You know, we might as well just go back to what I was doing before, you know, and it's done. So it's all, it's like very black and white for me. And I don't think that's healthy either. And I yeah. recognize that it's not because, you know, I think, you know, our desserts and, 
and the sweet things are also a gift from God. <laughs> and you, and you can't, I, I'm not one to like totally take out like a whole type of food. Right. I'm, I'm with you there. Um, I believe that anything that God created for us to eat, um, you know, is, is okay. Um, in, moderation obviously um but yeah i i don't believe in any kind of thing that completely eliminates a, a food group i know for myself um too much sugar and i feel awful like my whole body will ache after having a lot of sugar um and so i've learned that over the years yes if i go to a wedding i can have a piece of cake but i can't then the next day turn around and <laughs> eat everything that well, that's the problem i get into is because yeah. once i'm like once i taste one thing of it i'm just like oh well let's give up go back right to what well I'm and saying. that's where i said the daily hourly prayer comes into play um because it, it really is just like anything else in your spiritual life it's never a okay let's get rid of it and then it's gone for good kind of craving um that they're always going to be there. And so you have to continually ask God to strengthen you and continually ask him to fill you with more of him and less of, you know, whatever the thing is. Um, well, the truth is, cause there's always going to be something like you might get over that one thing, but then, right. you know, somebody hurts your feelings and you want to go dive back into the ice cream. Like you, right. it, it's really like a, it's how you live. It's your daily bread. It's, you know, it's going yeah. every day and, and kind of submitting and making sure that is. God is feeling. And I'm kind of preaching to myself right here because, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I need this. I need this episode. This is one of those like episodes that I need to listen to for myself. So I'm kind of preaching to myself there. The other thing I wanted to bring up is just um, in general, because I know you that isn't it the um, paleo diet that I don't, I won't call it diet, but that's the way of eating that works really well for you. Yeah. Is that right? Um, it is. It's what, it's really what, how I feel the best. And I will say, I call myself practically primal, primal. <laughs> because okay. I'm not like a teetotaler um, in any way, because it does eliminate some things. Um, but it's really just eating meats, mostly lean meats, um, fruits, vegetables. Um, primal does allow for like dairy and stuff. And so, um, you know, cheese on some things, um, nuts, seeds, really the things that God made for our bodies to live on in their pretty basic forms. Um, you know, um, so just, just not a lot of processed things. Um, and that's how I feel best. Um, and when I eat that way, I don't really have to watch so much, calories or anything like that um i just try to eat real food and um i've found that i feel best when i'm just eating those real foods um so yeah well, a and lot your cravings go away then i find then you're not having to worry about what you're eating as yeah. much because i don't yeah. think and that's and i don't know if maybe that's a girl thing um but like for my husband like if he eats sugar, he doesn't cra- he doesn't continue to crave it. Um, whereas if I eat processed sugars, oh my body just like wants more and more and more. <laughs> it's like you know. Things. Well, I don't know if Scott's a good example because Scott is not a sugar person, sweet person at all. Like he could he could care less. Yeah. Um, about sweet, I don't even make him a cake or even buy him a cake for his birthday. Right. He just likes <laughs> cheesecake, so he's he just doesn't have a sweet tooth at all. So I don't know what to compare that to. <laughs> Yeah, but I I think most women tend to crave carbohydrates, the the sugars, the breads, um, those kinds of things. I think we tend to crave, and so that's I think that's why the kind of practically primal <laughs> way I eat um, works best for me because it does cut out those refined sugars, um, and so I'm getting. My carb, my sources of carbohydrates from fruits and veggies and things like that, rather than, you know, ice cream and cookies. <laughs> yeah, this is making me hungry. I haven't had lunch yeah. yet. <laughs> me too. Me either. Oh goodness. Okay. All right. Well, thank you so much for coming on my podcast. I, you always inspire me. So um, I'm glad to introduce you to the listeners. Um, so you are a health and wellness coach. How can people connect with you um, if they want to talk to you more? 
Okay. Well, um, I guess the easiest way would be to simply email me at, um, oh, that my email is so long. It's Danny, D-A-N-I, Klontz, C-L-O-N-T-S, Thomas, T-H-O-M-A-S, at gmail.com. Or you can um, find us on our website at advocare.com slash one three zero seven four five zero six nine. And I'll link all that on. I'll link on that in the show okay. notes so awesome. you oh my people goodness. don't have okay, to. That'd be great. <laughs> to worry about that. So go, just go to featherspodcast.com. dot com. Awesome. <laughs> Probably the easiest, and get the show notes from this episode. So sure. All right. Well, thanks again so much for hanging out with me. Thanks, friend. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed that episode. I just love any chance I have to um, talk to Danny. Uh, A couple things that I want to take from that conversation and that I learned from Danny is that one, that God does prepare you many times that you will feel uh, God preparing you and and you feel like he's doing something. You may not be able to put your finger on what it is, um, but you can definitely feel that stirring and just to keep after God and just keep your eyes open for what he might be doing. But the second thing is, and when you when you do finally see him moving, he doesn't always do it the way you think he's going to do it. And we can see that in Danny's story about how she thought, you know, she was going uh, international mission field and ended up, you know, just down the road um, in a health and wellness uh, type arena um, and being able to talk about the gospel in that way and just so much different than she thought. And I also think about um, there was an episode with Amanda White back in season one, and her story was very much like that. Um, she thought she was going to do one thing, and then God just totally different, did a different way. So if you want another story like that, you can go head back to season one, Amanda White. And the other thing is just the whole health and wellness thing is just how we need to be in good health to do what God calls us to do. And Danny just encourages me all the time in that. It's not really, you know, what we look like. It's it's really about being able to do the things that God wants us to do. And, you know, if we're distracted because we can't physically do what we need to do or we're having to go to the doctor's appointments or we even have problems focusing, you know, we might not be able to do what God is asking us to do to the best of our ability. Um you know, and so many times it really boils down to something emotional or spiritual that's really going on behind the scenes and how we should really and can really go to God and begin to ask him what that's about and, and find out really the root cause of, of what's going on in that arena of our life. Uh, and he is so faithful to show us what that is and, and just to bring healing in all aspects of our life. And y'all, I am just so preaching to myself right now. Um, I know it's a hard time of the year to be thinking about health and wellness, um, but it is such a priority for a lot of other reasons than just looking good when summer comes around. So just want to encourage you, this is a great time of year to get in the swing of things and hopefully not keep going downhill, you know, in the holidays and um, just get a head start on it and and go into the new year on the upswing. Um, I would encourage you to reach out to Danny. I have her email on the show notes over at featherspodcast.com. And she mentioned it briefly, but she is a part of AdvoCare. I use their products every single day and love them. And this is so far from a commercial for them. But just so you know, she's a resource out there as a coach. And if that's something that you need help in. And um, also before we go, I wanted to give you guys a heads up that I will likely be taking a short break for the holidays from the podcast. I'm not really sure which weeks those will be, um, but I always announce those, uh, that kind of thing over on my Facebook page. That's Amy J. Bennett page or on Instagram, which is Bennett AJ. Which reminds me, while we're on announcements, I wanted to let you know that I am still working on building my online ministry called Abiding Ministries, where this podcast will eventually live, and I'll be launching a video-based Bible study that I've written and recorded called Rich, Discovering God's Abundance in and Through Your Life. I'm so excited to get that to, to everybody, but that is all coming in the new year, so keep a watch out for that. All right. I think that is it for this week, guys. Thanks so much for listening, and we will see you next week on Feathers.